Hello everyone. In my today's session, I am going to deal with the topic semiconductors. Semiconductors word itself can be divided into two parts. That is semi and conductors. Semi means half. Conductors are nothing but metals. Where you can observe the free electrons which are responsible for electrical conductivity. So, in our today's session, we are going to see what actually is a semiconductor based on its general properties. But why we need to study about semiconductors? We can actually see on the screen and even we know that whatever electronic gadgets or devices we are using in our daily life all of them consist of semiconductors like mobile phones computers leds switches sensors everywhere there are different types of semiconductors used that's why we need to know what actually are semiconductors and what are their applications what is the theoretical background behind this semiconductors so let us start so first we are going to see what is the definition of semiconductor? So the semiconductor is a substance that has an electrical conductivity which is going to increase with increase in temperature and the electrical conductivity is intermediate between that of a metal and insulator. So if the material is taken and temperature is increased then if the electrical conductivity is increasing then we can say it is a semiconductor but if we are going to check for a conductor it is reverse in that if you take a metal and heat it or increase the temperature the electrical conductivity decreases but in semiconductors it is reverse that is electrical conductivity increases with increase in temperature so this definition consists of two parts one is with respect to temperature dependence and another one is with respect to the comparison bet between conductor and insulator and the second part is nothing but the electrical conductivity of a semiconductor lies in between that of a metal and insulator and there relation is something like the conductivity of a metal is greater when compared to the conductivity of semiconductor and it is greater when compared to the conductivity of insulators so lhs is your metal and rhs is your insulator and semiconductor is in between so based on the conductivity we can say something about the resistivity also we know that conductivity and resistivity both are related inversely so resistivity of metal is less when compared to semiconductor but when compared to insulator semiconductors have lesser resistivity so based on these parameters we can define semiconductor next coming to its general properties so the first property is the variable electrical conductivity variable means changing electrical conductivity is going on changing that is they cover entire range from strictly metallic to an insulator that's why as it is having a wide range it can be set as wide spectrum of phenomena so it is based entirely on electrical conductivity which is variable in case of semiconductors next is the property which can be taken from the definition itself that is electrical conductivity of semiconductors lie intermediate between that of a metal and insulator that is electrical conductivity of metal is highest and insulator is the least and semiconductors have a electrical conductivity in between these two next property 
is based on the resistance. As the temperature is increasing, the resistance of semiconductor goes on decreasing. We have conductivity directly proportional to temperature. And we know that resistivity is inverse of temperature. That is because resistivity is reciprocal of conductivity. That is sigma is inversely proportional to rho. That's why rho is inversely proportional to temperature because sigma is directly proportional to temperature. Remember the resistance is going to decrease as temperature is going to increase and resistance and resistivity both are directly proportional that is we know that R is equals to rho L by A. That's why resistance and rho we can understand in case of semiconductors. Next property is how to change the properties of the semiconductor. So the conducting property can be altered by doping that is by deliberate and controlled introduction of impurities into the crystal structure. Doping is a method where a controlled and deliberate introduction of impurities is done into the crystal structure by different impurities we can just change the properties of the semiconductor which is very helpful for different applications. Next is its high thermal conductivity. Semiconductors are having a high thermal conductivity. Next property is based on the resistivity. Resistivity range is from 10 raised to minus 6 ohm meter to 10 raised to plus 7 ohm meter. So this is the range where semiconductor resistivity can be observed. Then a very important point that is the energy gap of semiconductor. We know that if you are going to consider a metal, in metals the conduction band and the valence band are overlapped. That's why there won't be any energy gap. But if you go for insulators, the valence band and the conduction band are very far from each other with respect to energy. That's why in insulators the energy gap is very large. But if you consider the semiconductors, the energy gap is generally less than 5 electron volts. That is, again the energy gap is intermediate between that of a conductor and insulators. And we know that energy gap is nothing but the energy difference between the maximum of the valence band and the minimum of the conduction band. So, for conductors, electrons should be, um, for conduction in semiconductor, the electrons should be present in the conduction band. Then only the conduction is going to take place. For conduction to take place, the electrons have to jump into conduction band. That is, it has to overcome the energy gap. Then only conduction is possible. So all these details we are going to deal in our next session and our next session will be totally based on the classification of semiconductors. So these are the different properties of semiconductors which are very helpful for further studies and even helpful in application purposes. So thank you.